All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Discovery Reading. My name is Marie, and today we are going to read books about migration. So before we start, I'll just tell you what migration is. So migrate means to move from one place to another. Um, and lots of different animals will migrate, and they'll migrate for um, a few different reasons, and we'll kind of talk about those as we read our books. Okay, but the first book we're going to read is called Is This Panama? A Migration Story by Jan Thornhill, illustrated by Soyeon Kim. And we are given permission to read this by, let's see, Owl, Owl Kid Books. Okay, so let's start. When Sammy, the young Wilson's warbler, woke up, his toes were cold, his toes were colder than they'd ever been before. Even though it was still August, frost twinkled and sparkled on every leaf in his, of his home near the Arctic Circle. Sammy shivered, partly because he was cold and partly because he was excited. If, this, if it was this cold, it must be time for him to make his first migration to south, south to Panama. Sammy had heard about Panama from older Wilson's warblers. They said that Panama was warm all year long, even at night. Sammy had also heard that some insects in Panama were as big as warblers. He wasn't sure if he believed that though. But where were all the other warblers? Usually there was somebody foraging for food nearby. Sammy hopped up to the top of the tallest dwarf birch, expecting to see someone he knew, but there was no one. Sammy was worried. He didn't know how to get to Panama by himself. Sammy spotted a ptarmigan. All summer, the ptarmigans had, had been hard to see because of their brown feathers blended in so well with the landscape. Lately, though, their brown feathers were being replaced by white ones. Have you seen any warblers? Sammy trilled. Nope, clucked the ptarmigan. I bet they've flown south. Warblers always fly south. Is that what you do? asked Sammy. Don't have to, said the ptarmigan. There's lots of food for me here, and I grow special feathers for winter. Soon I'll be almost completely white. Everybody will, everybody will be able to see you, said Sammy. Won't that be dangerous? Silly Sammy, chuckled the ptarmigan. I'll be almost invisible once the snow comes. But you, Sammy, you'd better start flying south. Let's see the ptarmigan. So that's the ptarmigan right there. That's a bird that lives in the Arctic. Uh, they're brown during the summer and they turn white in the winter to blend in with the snow. And something cool about ptarmigans is that they have feathers on their feet. So they have very fluffy feathers to keep their feet warm in the winter. Sammy flew higher and longer than he'd ever flown before. He flew for a whole hour, and he was getting tired. A caribou was grazing below. Sammy dipped down close. Is this Panama? he asked. I'm supposed to migrate south to Panama. I'm going south, the caribou snorted loudly, because caribou always snort loudly. <laughs> but I've never heard of Pam Panama. I'm heading to my winter forest. Why don't you just stay here? It's very windy out in the open. The snow gets hard and crusty. In the, for in the forest, the snow is softer, so it's easy for me to use my hooves to scoop off the lichens I like to eat. I don't like lichens, said Sammy. I like insects. Then you'd better keep going. I haven't seen any insects at all today. Sammy had been flying for several hours when he heard a strange trumpeting noise. A flock of sandhill cranes were, was passing high above him. The birds were fast, and Sammy had to flap his wings like crazy to catch up. Are you going to Panama? he asked breath breathlessly. Never heard of it, drawled one of the cranes. We're mi migrating south to Texas. Another crane noticed that Sammy was tired. 
Hop on, he said. Thanks, said Sammy, landing on the bird's hunched back. How do you know how to get to Texas? We look for landmarks, special places we recognize along the way. See down there? We look for that pond every year. For the next few days, Sammy hitched rides with the cranes and spent the nights with them in the marshes, where the gangly birds used their long beaks to probe the mud for roots and worms, but Sammy couldn't see well enough in the dark to find insects to eat, so he had to say goodbye and continued on his own. The next time he stopped to rest, Sammy spotted a creature who seemed to be just ahead who seemed to be just ahead attached to a long very oh just seemed to be ahead attached to a long very striped tail. Hello, Sammy trilled. Do you know where Panama is? No idea, hissed the garter snake. I don't get around much. No legs, as you can see. But don't you migrate? You have no feathers or fur to keep you warm. I do migrate, said the snake. I follow the scent of other snakes to an underground cave where hundreds of us sleep away the winter together. There are no snakes where I come from, said Sammy. Too cold, probably, hissed the snake. We like places that have hot summers and lots of frogs and earthworms and... You eat frogs and earthworms? asked Sammy. Oh, yes. And guess what else I, eat? I sometimes eat? Sammy had an idea what the answer might be, so he flew off quickly, wondering if he could smell his way to Panama. That's funny. Snakes eat birds sometimes, so Sammy had to fly away. Near a huge lake, Sammy was suddenly surrounded by hundreds of green darner dragonflies all flying eastward. Are you migrating? Sammy asked. We surely are, the darner said, answered. She didn't seem to be looking at Sammy, though it was hard to tell because of her strange insect eyes. Where are you migrating to? asked Sammy. Far enough south that we won't freeze. Then why are you flying east? We're following the shoreline. It can be dangerously windy over, op over the open water. Sammy could fly faster than the dragonflies, so he went ahead of them. Sammy followed the lake's shoreline for two days. At sunset on the third day, he swooped down into a great forest. Fluttering and chirping among the, the highest branches was a flock of Sammy's warboy cousins. Sammy was thrilled. He was sure he'd made it to Panama. Is this Panama, he asked. Don't I wish, twittered a red star. But no, we're nowhere near Panama. There's Sammy. And another bird right there. Sammy was disappointed, but then he brightened. Can you show me the way? Sure, we're about to take off, but it's almost dark, cried Sammy. Warblers do migrate at night, you know, said a Blackburnian warbler. Warbler. We all we follow the stars. The stars, said Sammy, astonished. Of course, we look for patterns that match the star maps we have in our heads. When it feels just right, we fly. Sammy started stared up at the darkness. One group of twinkling stars made him feel all quivery inside. I think I feel it, he sang, and off he flew with the other warblers. A couple of nights later, Sammy was surprised to see stars glittering below him. Those aren't real stars. Those aren't real stars, a black-throated green warned. Just try to ignore them. But a few minutes later, stars were absolutely, absolutely everywhere. 
Sammy didn't know which way to fly. He was so confused he became separated from the flock. Sammy was becoming frantic when he saw another Wilson's warbler. Maybe it was someone who could help him. They were almost close enough to touch beaks when bonk, Sammy smacked into something hard and flat and invisible. Stunned, he twirled to the ground. Sammy was lucky. He wasn't badly hurt when he hit the window and was able to fly away from the buildings to a meadow. Exhausted, he fell asleep. Sometimes animals will get confused when they see other whites, um, especially sea turtles. We'll talk about them in the next book though. Sammy woke up surrounded by hundreds of fluttering orange and black wings. Is this a butterfly party, he asked. Oh no, one of the monar monarchs answered. We just stopped to rest on our way to South Mexico. Is Mexico close to Panama, Sammy asked. Pretty close, said the butterfly, but I think Panama is farther. As the morning sun took away the night chill, the air began to move. This is what the monarchs were waiting for. One by one, the, they took flight, swirling higher and higher on the warm updraft. Sammy followed. As the day wore on, Sammy and the butterflies found themselves surrounded by ominous towering clouds. The wind turned wild, scattering everyone in all directions. Pummeled by rain, Sammy landed alone on a beach where he waited for the storm to end. At the water's edge, a long-legged bird was rearranging his wet feathers with his long beak. Pa, he muttered, grounded, me unbelievable. I was grounded too. Sammy piped in. No kidding, grumbled the bird. But everyone knows Hudsonian godwits like me fly all the way to Patagonia in one go. No stopovers. Is Patagonia near Panama? Sammy asked. Just twice as far, just twice as far as all. The godwit stretched out its wings. Sammy followed the bigger bird out over open water. Soon there was only a vast expanse of ocean far below. For two days and two nights, Sammy struggled to keep up. His wings had never been so sore. He was out of breath. Got to rest, he panted. Not me, said the godwit. No more stopovers. But there's a tiny island down there. Phew, said Sammy, and down he went. Just as Sammy landed, a geyser of water blew out a gasping blew out of a gasping hole in the middle of the island. The water came down like rain, drenching Sammy. Then the island started to move. Sammy ran uphill as fast as he could so he wouldn't fall into the ocean. And then he saw the eye. The eye was almost as big as Sammy. The island introduced herself as a humpback whale. She was migrating south to warmer waters to calve. But where are you going? What are you doing way out here? The whale asked. Her voice was much deeper and slower than Sammy's. So she was a little hard to understand. I'm mi migrating to Panama. You're a tad off course, said the whale, trying to be kind, but I could get you a bit closer. Humpbacks can swim very fast when they want to, but Sammy's new friend was so busy chatting with other migrating whales that in a whole day they barely got anywhere. Sammy wanted to move faster and he was hungry. The whales pointed him in the right direction and he flew off. Sammy Island hopped through the Bahamas before landing in Cuba, where he joined up with a mixed flock of migrating birds. After a few days, the group crossed over the water to Mexico. They followed the coastline southward, stopping to forage near Mayan ruins, in fields of maize, and in monkey-filled rainforests. Eventually, they stopped to look for food near a river. Sammy had
had been migrating for almost three weeks. He was so tired he didn't even notice a juicy caterpillar walking right over his foot. He was so tired he, he didn't care if he ever got to Panama. He, allowed, he let out a big sigh, well, a, as big a sigh as a tiny bird like Sammy can make. he noticed something peculiar about about the thicket. Sam, said, Sammy suddenly felt all quivery inside and then he understood. He wouldn't have to ask anyone where he was anymore because he knew where he was. Said, Sammy was in Panama. He had made it to his winter home. Oh, that's the end. Oh wow, it shows you the map of where Sammy went. So he started up here near Alaska and Canada and he flew all the way down here and then all the way down here to Panama, which is in Central America. So that tiny bird flew all the way across down here. That's pretty cool, don't you think? Hmm. So, Birds will migrate to um, when, it, so during fall time, so around this time, birds will start, and other animals will start to migrate uh, down to where it's warmer. So Sammy started up in Alaska, where it's really cold, and um, because it was getting colder, there was not as much food available for him, so like insects, there was not as much insects available. And so he flew all the way down to Panama where it was warm and there was a lot of insects and a lot of food for Sammy. Um, so that's one reason why animals will migrate. Um, here is a, another type of warbler right here. So this is called a yellow warbler. It's a little shaky. So they're not very big. It's about the size, he's smaller than my hand. So these birds are pretty small and you just imagine this little tiny bird flying all the way across Canada and America and down, all the way down to Panama. Let's see. Here's another warbler. This one is called the yellow rumped warbler. His head's a little shaky but I'm sure they're called the yellow rump warbler because of the yellow on the base of their tail right there. So warblers are only one type of bird that will migrate. Um, about 40% of birds will migrate. Um, some birds like the ptarmigan, like it said in that book, will not migrate. They'll just stay in one place, but the warblers and other birds will migrate. Um, here's some other birds that I'd like to show you. So this is a starling, a European starling. They will also migrate and they will use actually the sun to help them know where they're going. So use the, they'll use the sun to help them find their way around. It's pretty cool. And there are some other birds. It's not just small birds that migrate. There are some big, big birds like this duck right here. So this duck is called a canvas back because of its white back right here. So it's called a canvas back. So ducks and other types of waterfowl will also migrate. Yeah, lots of lots of birds will migrate. All right, so we're going to read another book. And it is about a bunch of different animals migrating. And I want you guys to pay attention as to how they are finding their way back home. Okay, and this one is called Home at Last. A Song of Migration by April Pulley uh, Sayer and with illustrations by Alex Berenzi. And we are given permission to read this by um, Henry and Holt Company. All right, let's get started. This one that also talks about a warbler. So, in the dark of night, a warbler, a warbler finds her way by stars. Her wings flap a thousand miles. Will she reach her summer home? No one knows. 
but like others, she's heading for home at last. There's the warbler flying. Like I said in the other book, warblers would use the stars to help them migrate. So there's the stars right there. Out at sea, grown-up salmon remember a smell. It's the smell of the stream where they were born. They'll swim 2,000 miles, hop up waterfalls just to be home at last. Flippers push, gently paddle. A sea turtle swims. No one knows how she finds her way, but she swims across the ocean to a beach where she was born. She lays her eggs there. Home at last. Tiny wings carry monarch butter monarchs hundreds of miles one flutter and flap at a time. She flies to a mountain she's never seen, yet somehow she knows. She's home at last. Oops. On his first journey, a young gray whale swims with his mother from warm tropical waters to cold Arctic seas. Once there, he and his family will feast on plankton aplenty. Fat and full, they'll be home at last. A caribou herd, like a river of antlers, walks and eats and walks. They head from the forest to their summer home, the coastal plain. When they reach it, they'll be home at last. In fall, Lobsters walk single file from deep water to their winter home, the reef. March, march, march. Tentacle to tail, they march until they're home at last. An Arctic tern hovers, then dives for fish. He has two homes, one at each end of the earth. He'll need lots of food to fuel his 12,000 mile trip, but it's worth it to be <laughs> home at last. In spring, a wood frog hops over rocks, through fields, across roads, by a house. He smells the moist air, the leaves, the pond, and then he knows he's home at last. In that same pond, the frog joins a chorus. They fill the forest with sound. Just then, a tired bird landed, lands on a branch high above. What bird do you think it is? The warbler has reached her home at last. There's the warbler. All right, so that's the end of that one. There's some more information at the back of the book that tells you why animals migrate. Um, let's talk about, oh, Let's read the yellow rumped warbler, Oh, which is what I have right here. Okay. Each year, northern bird, bird watchers wait with excitement for the, uh, for the arrival of tiny colorful birds, yellow rumped warblers. These warblers are one of the first species to arrive in spring. Yellow rumped warblers weigh only half an ounce 
and are five to six inches long from beak to tail. In winter, they live in the southern. Um, in winter, they live in the southern United States and Central America. In spring, they fly north to other parts of the U.S. and Canada. To find its way, warblers use clues such as position of the stars, landmarks, and the Earth's magnetic field. Yet, even after a long journey as far as 6,000 miles, the warbler may build its nest in the very same tree as the year before. So that's pretty cool. So this little bird right here, the yellow rump warbler, will fly um, from Canada all the way down to Panama. And it uses cues such as the stars and landmarks and also the Earth's magnetic field. So that is so cool that a small bird like this knows how to fly across the world. <laughs> let's see, let's read another one. Let's talk about the sea turtle. So green turtles are sea turtles that can be found, that can be four feet long and weigh as much as 400 pounds. But these sea creatures lay their eggs on land. When it is time, the females swim back to the beach where they were hatched. There they crawl out of the ocean dig a hole and lay about a hundred eggs in the sandy nest. Sometimes the female returns to the beach. She is not seen for 20 years. Wow. So sea turtles will lay their eggs in the sand on the beach. They'll dig a hole and then lay their eggs in that hole and then they'll cover it with sand. Um, and then when the sea turtles hatch, uh, they will crawl to the ocean and they use the moon. They do it at night. The baby sea turtles that just hatched will use the moon to guide them to the ocean. Um, and lights from cities are actually kind of a big problem for sea turtle hatchlings because they use the light from the moon and sometimes they can get confused with light from cities and they'll end up crawling towards the cities and away from, uh, away from the ocean. So that's kind of a problem. Um, but that's how sea turtles will uh, help them know where to go. They use the, um, the moon. Um, I do, I mean, we do have a sea turtle at the museum, um, a sea turtle specimen, but I don't have it with me right now because it's in the freezer being decontaminated of parasites. So unfortunately I do not have the sea turtle today, but I do have something really cool to show you. Let's see. Oh, first, let's talk about butterflies. So I have this really cool butterfly right here. Butterflies will also migrate, especially monarchs. Um, they fly, I think they said, to the southern United States. So like, uh, I don't remember exactly, but somewhere in the United States, monarch butterflies will go. Um, but other butterflies will also migrate. Here's some more butterflies. Butterflies are really cool animals. Let's see. There's a little section that talks about monarchs. Let's see. I think. Aha. Uh -huh. So in the fall, monarch butterflies from all over the United States and Canada fly southward to parts of California and Mexico. In winter, the trees in these places are covered with monarch butterflies. In spring, the monarchs fly northward once again, mating and laying their eggs along the way. No single butterfly lives long enough to complete the round trip journey, but several generations make the journey over time. So yeah, modern butterflies will migrate down to California and Mexico um, during the winter. Okay, we're gonna talk about one more animal that migrates. It's called the caribou, also known as the reindeer. Um, so the caribou will migrate to the forest in the winter because it's easier to look for food. And I have something cool to show you. So this is from a caribou, from a male caribou. It is huge. It is very big. So here's the top, and then it goes all the way. And that's the, oh, this is the bottom right here. That's where it attaches to their head. Um, so yeah, it is huge. Their antlers can get really, really big. Um, so yeah, these are on the male. This is from a male. Females also have antlers, but um, they will actually keep their antlers throughout the winter. Males will 
their antlers will fall off in November or December um, after, after mating because they don't need them anymore. Uh, they use their antlers to attract females. So the bigger the antlers, the more likely they are to get a mate. Um, and when they are done mating, then the males will drop their antlers because they don't need them anymore. Uh, but females will keep their antlers so that um, it's, they use their antlers to look for food and dig in the snow. Uh, so females will keep their antlers to help them look for food uh, because they will usually be pregnant um, with their babies. So they need all the food they can get to help um, because they're pregnant and they need, they need food. Okay, so yeah, pretty cool. It's from a caribou or reindeer. So yeah, lots of animals migrate um, and it's really cool to learn about migration. Uh, thank you guys for joining me today and I hope you learned a little bit more about migration. We'll see you next week. Bye everyone.